said, I've only one thought. It's about confidence, identity, self-belief. But again, that pride is much more than outward show. It translates into public policy. Consider this. As First Minister, Jack McConnell wanted to tackle the problems that bring Scotland down. Chief among these, smoking. Fearing that people would defy the ban on smoking in public places, he made a calculated appeal to Scottish pride. Well, I think if the smoking ban had been imposed from Westminster, there would have been widespread resistance. I think there would have been people blatantly breaking the law. Whereas, although there were threats of that, uh, and there were suggestions that it might happen, actually because of a feeling of, I think, national pride in the ban, and that's acceptance that the National Parliament of Scotland had made that decision democratically, then when the ban actually came in, everybody in Scotland accepted that it was there and it was right. In 2003, during his self-imposed exile, Alex Salmond witnessed the moment he believes the Scottish Parliament grew in stature to speak to the soul of Scotland, to echo the voice of the street. And I was sitting in the House of Commons, I turned on the, the Parliament programme and there was the Scottish Parliament debate live on Iraq and I started to watch it and I was absolutely transfixed by the quality. There was a speech from George Reid which was an absolutely wonderful speech. It's about a new world order. It's about the Cold War being over. It's about the world's only superpower being determined to impose its own order of preemptive strike and Pax Americana. For me, it was kind of a, a bit of a turning point. I mean, I, I saw then, when the Parliament got to debate a big issue, then people would make big speeches, big points. Kind of coming of age, almost. Alex Salmond had insisted he would never return as party leader. He duly returned and went head-to-head -head with Jack McConnell in the 2007 election. Again, the core issue was identity. Who most identified with the Scots? It was a battle for the soul of Scotland. I think we won the election. By definition, Alex Salmond's entire pitch is based upon Scottish identity. He says he won the election by standing up for Scotland and has maintained that stance in government. People don't elect a government in Scotland to stay quiet when Scotland's interests are at stake. They expect their government to speak up for them at every opportunity. Now, I'm quite happy to do it politely. I'm delighted to cooperate in anything and everything where it's possible to cooperate. I'm happy to acknowledge where gains are made, where solutions are found, for example, in the vexed question of uh, human rights and prisoners in Scotland and making sure that, that uh, seriously bad people didn't get lots of money at the public purse where we can make advances. But, you know, when Scotland's essential interests are at stake, then I shall speak up for all I'm worth and I'll continue to do it and I will not be apologising to anyone for doing my job. All of which presents us here in Scotland with a choice. Do we need independence to express our Scottishness or can that be happily accommodated within the Union? Now, we're not alone.